Hey everyone, this is George Perros, and uh, I'm, I'm doing a solo uh, three questions. I just have one question this week. And uh, the reason is uh, I was supposed to do a podcast with somebody, but I was a little bit nervous because of Hurricane Ian that's headed our way. And uh, I want to make sure that I, I always try to be really proactive, um, create content early. And I'm just kind of thinking about, like, hey, you know, I, I, sometimes I just like doing these solo podcasts, just kind of sharing some thinking and uh some of my thoughts and so if you know anything about the three questions which you probably do if you listen to this podcast uh is i ask who's a teacher that inspired you who's an administrator that inspired you and what advice did you give to your first year teacher self and i, I was the first one to go on this right i always try to lead by example and i remember actually talking about the teachers inspired me i talked about my kindergarten teacher uh, mrs stock uh my phys ed teacher uh, who's also my football coach calvin hobbs and uh, my music teacher, Cindy Penrose, who have all had a tremendous impact on me. I, I've still had the opportunity to connect with them. They actually uh, listen to that podcast and it, it made a difference. And those are teachers I had um, that had a huge impact on me. But I also wanted to take a moment today because I think a lot of times, you know, when we're in the education profession, uh, it's really great to look back on the teachers that maybe inspired us to be a teacher, uh, sometimes through the good and sometimes through the bad. Sometimes I, I've connected with educators who said, you know, I had this teacher who said I would never amount to anything and I wanted to prove them wrong. I'm, I, have nothing, I have nothing wrong or I have no, uh, you know, I kind of like some spite, uh, some spite uh, achievements that people make in their life. It's kind of like the Michael Jordan you know, someone didn't believe in me, so I went out to prove them wrong. I, I, you know, I admire that too. Uh, so we we talk about the teachers we had, but I also want to, uh, today I just want to talk about a, a colleague of mine that had a tremendous impact. And unfortunately, um, uh, he passed away uh, several years ago, but I think about him a lot. Uh, his name was Dale Awanchuk. And uh, I, I will tell you this, that he knew how much I looked up to him. So as much as I wish he could hear this today, uh, I know he knew how much I looked up to him and, and really just admire him. And he was, a he was a shop teacher and I don't know if it was shop. It was like ICT, whatever it's, you know, it was like industrial arts when I was a kid, it was always changing its name. It still changes the name today. And he taught things that I, <laughs> I'm going to stay straight up. I have no interest in, uh, I'm not, I'm not a big building guy or anything like that. Um, and that's why I talk about him. Like he was so amazing at that stuff. He was so passionate about it. And I could tell that kids, you know, that were passionate about it really connects with him. And that was something, um, really amazing. And he was so passionate about it. He actually, um, he taught, um, that, but he also built houses on the side. Like this guy was just, uh, he just worked. He just loved working. And, um, he did things he loved and I know his, uh, his, uh, daughter very well. She's a teacher and, uh, she might be even listening to this. She's, uh, her name's Kendall and she's absolutely amazing. And, uh, every time I talk to her, I see so much of, um, his influence on in her and just how wonderful he was, uh, and just seeing that in her. And just, I know that she is probably inspiring kids herself because of her dad and her mom, who is absolutely incredible, uh, as well. And the reason I want to talk about Dale is not because I was interested in the content of teaching. To be honest, it was probably the, <laughs> the least interesting thing for me when I was a kid, uh, maybe next to science, but that's a whole other podcast. But it was the way he connected with people. I never had an opportunity to, um, to talk to him. I just didn't really know him, right? I was new to the school and I, I didn't really know him. And so we, it, took us, it took me about four months uh, in that first uh, year uh, and I worked with him for five years to actually uh, start actually talking to him. I remember it was right before um, we went on December break. And uh, I just made it, I just, I just remember um, making a joke and he's like, Hey, have a, you know, have a good break with your family. And it was like our first interaction. And I was just, there was a lot of teachers there and stuff like that. And I don't know, there's something really special. I already looked up to him. I knew he had such influence on staff that, you know, people on the staff really looked up to him and uh, how big of an impact that he had. But I just saw him connect with kids and connect kids connect with him. And it was really reminded me, like I always talk about relationships, but he was a master of it. And it was a reminder to me that when we talk about relationships in education, and Dale was a master of this, was it is not a one-way street. We talk about relationships, like we really need to know our kids, but I think it's really important that kids, you know, know us. 
And what I mean by that is he was passionate about, um, you know, many things in his life, his family, obviously the work that he did and kids knew this about him and they looked up to him he wasn't, you know, someone who only presented himself as a teacher. He had other interests that he was really excited about and, you know, kids would spend their time talking to him and, um, it was just a really powerful thing, but it was also that he had very high expectations, um, from his students. And I say something in. Uh, my talks that was influenced by him tremendously. And I talk about the story where um, some kids were acting in a, in a way that uh, was very disrespectful to me. And I shared that, you know, when I was a teacher, that kids could have an influence on me as an educator. Because we always talk about the impact that you know, teachers have on kids, but we don't necessarily talk about the other way around. And I got this from Dale because he said, when he would talk to his students, that you say, would I cross the street to come talk to you if I saw you outside of school? Because that showed him that you had an impact. And it was it was really kind of thinking about that, is that do we set those high standards for our kids? Do we set those high standards? Do, you know, um, I, I'm a big believer that um, sometimes, uh, you know, kids have tough things that go on in their lives, but it also shouldn't mean that we lower our expectations of, how they treat other people, right? It's, it's, it's that we have an empathy, we have an understanding of, you know, kids do through different things. Uh, there's always a respect that's expected. And I think that some of the students that maybe, um, at maybe some of the hardest um, experiences uh, in Dale's class that struggle with other teachers were amazing with Dale Wanchuk because of that expectation and because he would remind kids that all the time that are you the kid that i would cross the street to come talk to to have a conversation with if i saw you outside of school because that is something that really kind of sticks to you and i actually um very personal story when i was a kid i was um i was I was terrible in some classes and I, I know this now, but I didn't really understand it then it had everything to do. Well, maybe with two things, but mostly with, um, sometimes as the personality of the teacher, we don't get along with every person we interact with as adults, kids, and that's reality. But it was also with the content. I met, I made a joke about how I struggle with science, which I, I always have struggled with science and in the science classes, um, I actually, uh, I, I would, I would be pretty bad. And the reason I'd be bad is because, um, I, I didn't want to look stupid. So I'd rather be the class clown than look like an idiot. And I think it's a good reminder for me when the people struggle with the stuff that we say is that sometimes it's like, Hey, I don't really understand this. So I don't want to look dumb or ignorant or that I'm lacking knowledge, but that I am actually, um, you know, I'm going to get a different perception of myself so I can feel more secure. And I did the same thing. I, I would cause trouble. And I remember one teacher in specific, I was a huge troublemaker and he was very passionate about science, um, but we didn't necessarily connect and I would all be terrible. And I remember actually seeing him uh, probably four or five years after I graduated from high school. And I saw him out at an event and he saw me and he, as soon as he saw me, he looked the other, he just took off. He's like, I don't want to, I don't want to talk to this kid. And I saw him see me and basically turn around and leave. And it's always something I struggle with. It's something I'm embarrassed by because I was a bad kid for him. And I think it's really easy to kind of point at others, but I think it's more important that we point to ourselves when we struggle with some of this stuff. And I, when Dale would say that, you know, about his expectation uh, is that would I cross the street come talk to you? I remember that teacher actually literally crossing the street to avoid me, basically going away from me because I was a bad kid. And it's like we sometimes pretend that teachers aren't humans. Teachers don't have feelings or emotions and they're not affected by negative things. Uh, you know, I, I, I know teachers that have had kids do horrendous things to them and I don't know how they came back from it, to be honest with you, in some ways. And so... When I think of Dale, I think of not only the way that he built relationships with kids, but his expectations. And it wasn't just the expectations. Um, it wasn't just the expectations he had of kids. It was of his colleagues. And just being around teachers like that, I know 
that I became better because of him. And I also know, and I think this is really important, that a lot of people became better. It wasn't just me. He had an impact on so many people. So much so that, you know, years after his passing, I think about him all the time. And as much as I wish he could hear this, I, I do want to honor his memory by sharing this stuff. But I also want to remind you that there are people in our buildings that we work with, our colleagues right now, who a lot of times, a lot of times because of our own insecurities, if we're being totally honest, sometimes a little jealousy, things like that. And Dale Wanchuk actually won Teacher of the Year. I remember this is early in my career at our school, and I was like so jealous. I never, I don't think I even congratulated him, or if I did, I made it maybe in a sarcastic moment. And it was like so well deserved. He's such an amazing teacher. And you know, as I left that school, I remember talking about how much he impacted me to him. So he knew this when I left, how much he had an impact on me. Um, but I, the reason I think it's really important for me to share this is not only because of his influence, and I hope that me sharing this will you know, inspire someone and his legacy will continue to live on whether you work with them or not. I think that's really important. But it's that idea that sometimes our colleagues, the people that are closest to us, we don't recognize until it's way too late. We don't actually share less. So I want you to really think about this story and I want you to go out of your way to actually um, let a colleague know about their impact. Someone you work with currently um, that has had an impact on you, that has shared something. Um, maybe even someone that you connect with on social media. And, and here's, here's, here's the deal. It's great if you do that on social media. I think it's awesome. Do not only do that to the person on social media because it's super easy to compliment strangers, but it's a lot harder to compliment people we know, but it's more important. Uh, and I think that to me is a really important aspect. And um, I can't remember, it was the, a Jalen Rose I wrote about it. It was like basically like we, we tend to, um, you know, bring roses to people's funerals, uh, but not when they're alive kind of thing. I can't remember the exact uh, the exact phrase, but I remember it really sticking with me. And if you think of something good about something you work with or a colleague, never let it just sit in your head. Always share it. There is never a time where a compliment cannot benefit someone else. And we sometimes say, oh, that person probably gets compliments from so many other people. Well, if other if you think that and other people think that, maybe that person hears no compliments. Um, sometimes the people that have had the biggest impact hear it the least. And we need to do that, especially in a profession where uh, people don't get credit. A lot of times they only hear negative things. They only hear when things go wrong. We need to be advocates for one another. And that's kind of the reason I want to share about Dale today. And so I hope that his story maybe impact you in a positive way. But more importantly, I hope that you ensure that the people closest to you, you share gratitude for them uh, way too early rather than way too late. It, it does make a difference. So uh, thanks for joining me on this solo episode of three questions, even though I just did one question. But I hope I inspired you to, to, to share who inspired you to them, to their faces. So thanks for joining me. Hope you have a wonderful week ahead.